Statistics and Excel. Confidence interval when standard deviation of the population is known. Part number two. Get ready and some coffee. Because if we want to get futuristic, we need statistics and Excel. Here we are in Excel. If you don't have access to this workbook, that's okay because we basically built this from a blank worksheet. First, a word from our sponsor. Yeah, actually, we're sponsoring ourselves on this one because apparently the merchandisers, they don't want to be seen with us. But, but that's okay, whatever. Because our merchandise is, is better than their stupid stuff anyways. Like our CPA six-pack shirts, a must-have for any pool or beach time. Mixing money with muscle, always sure to attract attention. Yeah, even if you're not a CPA, you need this shirt. So you can like pull in that iconic CPA six-pack stomach muscle vibe, man. You know, that CPA six-pack everyone envisions in their mind when they think CPA. Yeah, as a CPA, I actually and unusually don't have tremendous abs. However, I was blessed with a whole lot of belly hair. Yeah, allowing me to sculpt the hair into a nice CPA six-pack-like shape which is highly attractive. Yeah, may maybe the shirt will help you generate some belly hair too. And if it does, make sure to let me know. Maybe I'll try wearing it on my head. A and yes, I know six pack isn't spelled right, but three letters is more efficient than four. So I trimmed it down a bit, okay? It's an improvement. If you would like a commercial free experience, consider subscribing to our website at accountinginstruction.com or accountinginstruction.thinkific.com. But started in a prior presentation, so if you want to build this entire worksheet from a blank sheet, you may want to begin back there. However, you can start from this point, just building what we do from here, or possibly just look at this from a theory standpoint. If you do have access to this workbook though, there's currently three tabs down below. Example, practice blank. Example, in essence, the answer key, the practice tab having pre-formatted cells so you can practice the practice problem with less Excel formatting. The blank tab, the one we will be working on is where we started it with a blank worksheet and we'll be continuing with the blank part of the worksheet this time, practicing our Excel tools as we build it. Let's go to the example tab to get an idea of what we have done thus far and what we will be continuing to do going forward. Looking at confidence intervals when the standard deviation of the population is known, thinking about our standard statistical type of situation where we have a population, we want to know information about that population, but can't test every item within the population because it is too large. Therefore, we would like to take a sample of the population, test part of that sample, hoping we can apply the results of the sample to the population in general. The two types of tests we might use are one, hypothesis testing, and two, confidence intervals. Hypothesis testing working quite well when we have an idea of what that middle point is. For example, if we know the average number of peanuts that are in a bag of peanuts, we might want to test that by making that the hypothesis and then seeing if our samples deviate from the hypothesis enough for us to reject the original hypothesis. With confidence intervals, it lends towards situations where we just don't know what that middle point is. That is what we're trying to find within a range of confidence. And that's what we're looking at here, remembering we could do that basically in a similar thought process as we do with hypothesis testing, taking the sample of information, which would be in the middle point here, and then imagining a hypothesis of every point that's close to it or around it. So if I imagined that this was the actual mean, the question would be, if this is what I got in the sample, would it still be within the range for us not to reject it uh, if this was the actual number here. In that case, we would be thinking of the interval as being like peak to peak this way. But what would be easier for us to do, of course, is to think of that as, in essence, the middle point here, the, the mean of our sample, and try to build the range around it with some kind of a bell curve, which is basically what we're going to be thinking of here, noting that if we know the standard deviation, 
then we might be able to use still the normal distributions. But if the standard deviation was not known, and in particular, if the sample size was fairly small, we might have to use something that still looks like a bell curve, but they're called the T uh, type of distributions, which are a little fatter in the tails, which makes sense because we would want a larger level of confidence in order to uh, in, in order to deal with that type of situation. So we'll take a look at those uh, possibly in future presentations. So what we've done thus far, if we said, okay, we're imagining we have jobs that we're doing or the average uh, cost of a job of like making a deck or something like that in construction, the prices will change, but the general median point, if they're the same size of decks, you would think would be around a bell-shaped type of distribution. We want to find that middle point with a, with a confidence level of 95%. We actually generated the population data, which we're imagining like in a movie, we're like in universe, we don't actually know this, but we know it as the viewer, right? And so we actually created it in Excel by using a population mean of 822 uh, and then a standard deviation of 203 instead of 202 for some reason, but close to the 202 mean. We generated our population data, which includes 3000 items here and we did that by going to the data tab and the analysis. If you don't have that data analysis, you can see how to turn that on, searching for that in your favorite browser. Once we had that, we took the actual population mean, which is now this 816 of this data, which we're imagining we don't know. And then we do know the standard deviation of this data, which we're imagining is the actual full population of the 202. Then we took a sample. So here's our sample of this information. We took 300 as the sample. We ran the numbers on it. So we said 300 sample size, the middle point of the sample, 838. We took the state, well, we had the standard deviation of the population, which is this number. The standard error, which you can imagine is the standard deviation, not of the population, not of the sample, but imagining we took every possible sample combination of 300 out of the full population of data of 3000 the mean of all those samples and then we, we ran the standard deviation on that we approximate that calculation with this formula down here dropping the second bit off because we have a large enough sample size so just the standard deviation of the population over the square root of the sample size or n confluence level 95 and then we calculated basically our, our range here around the middle point. So we imagine the middle point is here. Then we need the range, which gives us basically our confident level, which we did three different ways uh, that we calculated that range. Now note that because we have a confidence level of 95%, then it's likely that the mean might not always fall uh, within the range, right? You can imagine a situation if I keep on I click it on this because it'll keep on randomly generating where we have the 816 here or what whatever this this 816 imagine a situation where it doesn't fall within the range and that would happen even by uh, just random chance five percent of the time because we had a 95 percent confidence level and so five percent of the time it wouldn't be there so we're going to test that out now by creating samples uh from our population and we'll make a hundred or how many did we make down here Th this is our sample of three uh 300 and then we're going out this way to a hundred going out this way so and then and then we'll run our same analysis on all of those so we'll take the mean of all of them and run our calculations and then we'll try to say hey is the actual number within within there right and we'll, we'll see that some percentage of the time it won't be that's when it's going to be false and we would expect that to happen around five percent of the time so it's currently calculating here's eight percent of the time five percent of the time so that's going to give the intuition and then we'll we'll run our our bell-shaped curve over here to run that all right so the blank sheet has some blank tabs so you can practice this with less Excel formatting. We're over here with the blank tab and we're gonna go to the blank part of it and continue. So I'm over here in column R 
And if you want to start a fresh sheet, you can. I'll try to tell you how you can put this together from here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to make then a skinny. So we need to make a skinny R. So I'm going to put my cursor on the skinny O and go home tab and paint brushy it and format paint over here to the skinny R. So then I'm going to say one, two, I'm going to bring this down to 300. This is going to be the size of our samples going down this way. So I'm going to put my cursor here. There's not that many of them. So I'm just going to drag down 300. Sounds like a lot, but it's not that far for Excel because look how fast we go. Go rapid. We don't need to do a sequence formula because it's pretty easy. And then I'm going to go to the font group, make that black and white. And then I'll make that smaller double clicking on it to bring it in. And then this way, we're going to go out and do this 100 times. This is going to be representing the number of samples. We're going to do 100 samples of sample count 300. So once again, I'm just going to let it count it out here to get out to 100. Uh, 100. That is, say it right. Say it right for crying out loud. Home tab, font group. Let's make this black white let's center it i'm going to select those again make them a little thinner so i'm selecting all of the columns so i can make them skinnier they're a little too wide a little too heavy right now okay to be on to be in our our show in our movie oh my goodness you're telling me that they're too fat okay they need to lose a little weight to be in our production because this is going to be this is it's just the part that they have to play needs to be a little thinner so then we're going to say okay so then what we're going to do is we're going to take random samples of our calculation here now if you don't have these numbers because you're starting from scratch you can make these by going to the uh in, to the data and we went to the data analysis and we did a random number generation random uh number here and we said that we want it to be one 3,000 numbers. So there's 3,000 of them around a mean of 822 and a standard deviation of 203, normal distribution, and then just place it right there so that you can pull those. So once we have these numbers, I want to pick out random numbers for our sample. I'm going to use an index function to do this. So it's going to be equal to index. And then I'm going to be picking up the array, which is this, putting my cursor here, control shift down to pick up those 3000, control backspace to go back up, comma. And then I'm going to use a random number generation, random between. And then I want to say between, this is I did the rand array again. I do that every time. Don't do it right this time, confusing people. So then I'm going to put it between the bottom and top of the columns. So it's going to say, here's the first number in the column that we selected. And that's going to be going from one to the top bit, which is 3000. There's 3000 rows, not columns, rows. Man, you're really messing things up, confusing people with your terminal. Okay, I'm trying. So there it is. So that's going to be a random number generated from here. All right, now I'd like to copy this throughout this entire table. So to do that, I want to make sure that this doesn't change. So I'm going to make this range absolute by selecting F4 here, F4 here, dollar sign before the letters and numbers and enter. And then I'm going to drag it to the right first because that's the easiest way to do it. So I drag it this way out to 100. So we're just copying that all the way out, all the way across to 100. And then I can just double click the fill handle, which is actually acting more like a button. Boom, bringing it down. All right, so now if I go back on over, I have random number generation in all the cells. It keeps on shuffling around, and that's kind of how we like it. So it might bother you at first, you're like, that's craziness. They're all these jumbling around numbers, but that's actually what we want, people. Don't let it bother you. Don't let it bug you. Just be calm. That's why, so now if that's bugging you, we're going to make the whole thing calm blue, ocean blue, so that it soothes us, even though, even though the ocean is, uh, the waves are jumbling around all crazy, like control shift down, it's still somehow calming. Home tab, font group, we're going to make it bordered, and if you don't have that blue, it's right here, 
standard, and we're going to make it blue. Okay. Ah. Uh, all right. That's better, at least. I feel a little better. Now let's go to the right, and let's run some data on this. Okay. So we're going all the way over here. And so what I want to do now is I want to I want to repeat this instead of totaling up. I can't total up over here. I want to total up all of the columns and I don't want that at the bottom. I want it over here. So I'm going to then repeat this by saying this is going to be equal to I can say or let's just do it again saying one, two, copy those. I'm going out to 100 again, copying out to 100. So I can bring these numbers back up to the top and go da, 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 da. there it is. And then I'll make these black and white headers, black, white. Let's center it. I'm going to make them all a little thinner again. So once again, these need to be thinned up because we're on camera. This is like a production movie production and they have to, everyone has to be fit. All right. So I'm going to make that thinner. Okay. So then I'm going to, in, let's insert another row here, right click insert, and then we'll make this a little wider. So now we're going to pick up, this will be the mean, otherwise known as the average of each of our samples. So this equals the average, and I'm going to go to sample number one over here, way the hell, way over here, and then control shift down. So there's the average of our 300 numbers in sample one. Enter, and I should be able to copy these across now. This is why I put it, by the way, in, in this format instead of in a vertical format, so that now I can copy this over very easily. So I'm just gonna copy this over. If I put in a vertical, which I would prefer to have it in sometimes, but if I did it that way, it would be harder for me to just copy these over the way I want to do it. So I'm going to copy these over. Boom. There's the averages. All right. So now let's run the, the STD standard deviation of the samples. Let's just take a look at the standard deviation of the samples equals STD uh, of the samples. So let's just do the same thing. I'm going to go over here and I take sample number one, control shift down all of those control backspace and there it is enter boom let's copy those across copy that roger roger out roger and then we're going to say boom all right and then let's go the count the n which is the sample uh count is 300 so i'll just say this equals the count and let's just count one of them i'll count from this last one Control shift down. There should be 300 in each sample. Actually, I should do that. Uh, let's do it the same. Let's go count tab and let's go way over to sample one and do it right. Do it right. No shortcuts here. We're going to do it the right way. Control shift down, enter, and then I can copy that across and we should get 300 all the way across because all the samples are, of course, the same in terms of sample count 300. All right, and then we're going to calculate the standard error, standard error of mean, which is basically, remember what we're thinking about with the standard deviation. We have the standard deviation of the population, the standard deviation of the sample, but we want the standard deviation as though we thought of all combinations of sample of 300 out of the population of 3,000. I'm going to make this a little smaller. Uh, which we're approximating with this formula way over here where we don't have to use the second bit of it because that's a correction factor we shouldn't need because the big N, which is the population, is fairly large. Therefore, standard deviation of the population divided by the square root of N, which is the sample size. All right, so we're going to calculate that over here. This equals... The standard deviation of the population. I'm going to pick that. That's way over here. That was in our data. So we said that was known. It's right there. So 202 about. And then divided by the SQ, SQ square root. Let's go back over here so you can see the formula. That might be helpful. So square root of N, which is our little n, our sample size. Close it up enter there it is let's add some decimals 
boom, boom. And then on the second one, I'm just going to say this equals that because it's going to be the same all the way across. Add some decimals, and then I'm going to copy that across. So it's just always going to be the same number all the way across because uh, it's de it's not it's dependent on the sample size, which is the same, and the population standard deviation, which is the same, and we're assuming is known in our example. Confidence, confidence level, which is given, that was 95%. So I'm going to say equals just to our data over here. We want a 95% confidence that was given in our problem. And let's basically just make that a percent here, percentify. And we want an A then, which is going to be alpha, which is equal to 1 minus 95, because there's 100% minus of that. That's a 5% that we idea that we won't know it. And then A over 2, which represents, if we look at our picture over here, the 5% is on the outside, 95% is the middle, and then one side of these, because it's symmetrical, will be the 5% over 2. So 5% divided by 2, or if I percentify, 2.5%. Let's go equal to that. This is going to be the same all the way across. I'm going to copy that down. Percentify. Let's add some decimals to this one. And then I'm just going to copy that across. That should be the same all the way down. So we'll copy that on down. Come on down. Let's make this blue and bordered. I'm going to select this whole thing now again. Ultra vez. Another time. Por favor, please. And then we're going to say home tab, font group, bordered. Dropping it down. There's the blue. Border blue. All right. Let's go back on over here again. And then, so now let's calculate our, our range. So here is our middle point from all of our different samples. That's the mean, right? The mean is, is from each sample. So now we're going to say, okay, given each of those means, what would be the range? So the me so I'm just going to use method one that we talked about in a prior presentation. I won't do it three times. The norm dot inverse uh, calculation of it. So let's make this black and white for the header. Home tab, font group, the black, white. So remember the, remember the idea. The mean represents the middle point. And then we want to pick up the range on the top and the lower end. Note that we can think about this in terms of z-scores, where the zero would be the middle point, or in terms of x's, which in our example is the price of the construction projects. So we're going to go over here and think about in terms of x's, price of construction processes on the range. So lower limit is going to be equal to, and this is going to be norm dot inverse and then we want to think of uh, the probability so here we're looking at this one here and then comma the mean middle point eight uh 18 in this case comma standard deviation not of the population here we're looking at the standard error that's the one we want so i'm going to say uh enter and that gives us the 820 uh the eight 23 and so now let's do the upper so the upper upper limit is now going to be equal to norm dot inverse and now i'm going to say one minus then this 2.5 for the other side comma the mean is going to be that middle point again comma standard deviation we're looking standard deviation not of the sample, not of the population, but the standard error, which is the standard deviation of all the different means that we got with the formula and so on. So enter. Let's add some decimals just to give us a little bit more exactitude. So, oh wait, now it's too fat. Ah, let's keep it skinny. Let's get rid of the decimals. I want to keep it thin. Oh, it's so important to be that thin. Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then let's copy this across. We're going to copy this across over here if we have to have if the decimals are going to make us too fat then we have to remove that from our diet i'm going to say <laughs> i'm 
<laughs> I'm gonna say this is gonna be blue and bordered, and then let's make this blue and bordered. Okay, so there are all of our ranges. Now let's look at our actual number and see how many times the actual number doesn't lie within the ranges. So let's say what was the actual the actual middle point we said was equal to and we generated this thing from our data over here the actual middle point which we know but isn't known by the people that we know because we're the watcher of the movie but they don't know that it's actually 826 right so we would expect that 826 would to lie within these ranges but we only have a 95 percent interval so we'd expect that it doesn't lie within the range about five percent of the time let's see if that's the case i'm going to say this equals this and i'm just going to put the same number all the way across so let's put the same number all the way across and then let's do a run a little test on it blue and see how many times it doesn't fall within the range so there's the actual so let's say i want it to come out true if it's within the range and false if it is not so i can do a logic test i can say if tab and then i want to say if and i need an and let's embed an and because there's two tests so i want to say if and this number if that number is let's just say greater than i'm not gonna well i could put greater than or equal to that has to be greater than or equal to the lower number and then comma the second logic condition and it had this number needs to be less than or equal to that number close up the and those are the two conditions i'm back to the if part of the logic test comma to go to the next condition if those are true i want you to put quote a t for true end quote you have to put it in quotes because that's a text field comma if it's not true i want you to put quote f for not to be true and so there's our logic test enter so this one's true i'm even going to go further than this making it more fancy let's make it centered let's go to conditional formatting and say that if this is equal to a t i want it to be true so i'll make it green if it's true and then i'm going to say conditional formatting if this is equal to an f then make it red so if this is an f it's red if it's t it's true fancy pantsy we just put the pleats on the pants right there adding the fancy factor let's go ahead and drag that to the right and we're going to drag that to the right and so there we have it so you can see right here this one didn't fall within the interval so because it's uh it's eight uh 826 is below the lower bit and then were there any other ones this one was 826 again it's below the lower bit so that's outside but most of them fall within how many would we expect to fall within the interval we would expect let's make this black and white here or let's just put it these are these are logic test we would expect five percent of the time right so let's let's count that let's do a count and say did it is that right five percent of the time uh there was an f uh, it, it's not going to be exact, but we can get, we can say, okay, let's test that out. So we'll say we want the count and then the percent. And let's make this black and white, black, white, centered. And so how many times did we get a T versus an F and then the total, right? So I'm just going to say equals count if tab this range, I'm looking at the range, control shift to the right and and then i'm going to bring it back this way i don't want to mess it up so i'm going to go back like that and then uh hold on and then comma what's the criteria count it if it's that t if you see that t and then i could copy this down by saying f4 on the keyboard here f4 on the keyboard so the range will stay the same not f4 here because i want the t to change to an f and enter 94 t's copying that down we get seven Fs, now it changed 93 to seven. If I then say this is the sum of these two, should add up to 100, let's take a, take a look at the percent. We're gonna say this equals 95 over 100 percent of the time. That would be 95% of the time. Let's add some decimals. 
Oh, it just barely is not too fat. And then we're going to take this one over this one and add some decimals. Percentified, decimalize, sum it up equals the sum. Oh, the total is going to be too fat. If I add, well, we don't need decimals on this one. It's 100%. So this one's exactly 95.5, what we would expect. But if I keep on shuffling, wow, that one's way off, right? But you would, you would expect this number to hover around 5%. So it goes sometimes up and sometimes down. So you can have, because there's only a hundred, but that's, so you say, yeah, about 95% of the time, it could be off by just a uh, random error, but we're looking at around 95% of the time, it should be within the range. That's what we're talking about. Now let's go ahead and make a, a good old uh, uh, graph. So I'm going to make our graph just so we can practice our graphing over here. So I'm going to make a skinny HN. We've done this many times. So I'm just going to imagine that we're going to pick it up from this data. So this is going to be our data that I'll use. I'll make that orange representing that's the data I'm thinking about to make the graph. So then I'm going to say this will be the uh, graph. The, with an STD of four standard deviations. So in other words, I want to make this graph. And how am I going to, how long does this need to be? Well, I'm going to make it four standard deviations from the middle point, which should include 100% of the data about. So I'm going to then select these two home tab font group. Let's make this black, white. So that means my lower X. Now, again, I'm not talking about the range of confidence level, I'm talking about how long does my X have to be on the chart to get 100% of the information. That's why it's four standard deviate. Okay, so this is going to be equal to, and we're going to be picking then the lower bit is going to be the average, which I believe is this number. I can't see the titles, but this is this number I believe was the average for sample number 11 or sample number 100. And then minus and we're picking up the, the standard deviation, which is the standard error. That's going to be this one, not the standard deviation of the population or of the sample, but the standard error, imagining the standard deviation of all samples of sample size, in this case, 300 and the mean of all of those, right? And then I'm going to say times four and then uh, enter and then the upper is going to be equal to the middle point this uh this plus the standard deviation standard error times four enter so there is our range so now let's go over here i'm going to make a skinny take this skinny home tab format paint brush it here i'm going to make my x p of x and then i'll do a z and so we'll do the whole thing. So let's try to do this with a sequence function. It'll look like this to put our X's. This is going to be equal to sequence. It's going to be a little wonky because these numbers keep changing. But I'm going to say sequence of the end number minus this. That's how many numbers we need. Comma, or, or let's say plus one, plus the one here. And then comma, the number of columns, just one comma, the starting point is going to be the lower X and then comma word. And then how many steps do we want? We want whole numbers or just one and then enter and it should spill down. Now, again, it's, it could get a little wonky because like these numbers keep shuffling. So it's, it's a little messy, but that's the idea. All right. So then we're going to go over here and say the, this calculation, the, the P of X is our good old norm dot dist norm dot dist x uh it's going to be x is going to be that comma the mean is the middle point which we're taking just from this sample 824 f4 on the keyboard so i can copy that down dollar sign before the letter and number comma standard deviation which is the standard error that we're looking for f4 on the keyboard dollar sign before the letter and the number comma and we want to make it zero so it is not cumulative close it up enter percentify to recognize add some decimals double click the fill handle bringing it down control shift down goes down to the bottom looks like it's doing what we would expect it to do let's go to the top headerize it home tab font group black white center 
And then let's take our data here, control shift down. Let's make that bordered and blue. And then let's take this data, control shift down, control backspace to add our chart, insert. Now we could do an easy chart like this one, or we can do like a line chart, but we're gonna do the full, we're gonna do the full area chart because we're getting fancy. We're doing the full fancy thing, getting used to how to do it this way. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, oh man, undo. What happened? Undo. Let's just insert it again. Just do it again. Just do it again. I'm gonna go to the chart and then uh, all and then area. There's the one. All right, I'm gonna get rid of the title because the title gets in the way of the curve, man. I just wanna see that nice curve. All right, so let's do that. And then we're gonna say, then I need to go to the chart design and then the data. And then I'm gonna remove these X's. These are generic X's down here. We want the X's to start at 770. And then did I make sure I delete this first and then do it, make sure you get it right. Control shift down, control backspace. It's not showing up yet. So I'm gonna select this and then click on it again. That usually makes it pop up, boom. All right, now I also, if I want my, my ranges to be properly input, then uh, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I can, I can calculate the Z score. So let's try to, let's think about the Z to put it, put, to put that in place. The Z of each of these X's in terms of standard deviation is going to be equal to brackets this number minus the mean, which keeps shuffling 816 F4 on the keyboard. Close it up, divided by the standard deviation, which for us is the standard error F4 on the keyboard. S to make it absolute, enter, adding some decimals, decimalizing it, and then we'll copy that down. That makes sense, it's four standard deviations away, right? Because that's what we made the X's to be four standard. So we're gonna copy that down, copy it down, and then let's make that blue and bordered. Let's make this blue and bordered while we're at it, blue and bordered. This could be thinner too, this doesn't need to be so wide. And then we're gonna control, let's control shift down. Let's put some borders around that. I did the blue, but not the border. I want both, we want both. Let's double click on all these to make them as thin as possible. We're trying to save some space, we're trying to be ergonomical here uh, with our space usage. So then let's say that we want our range now to be between this range. So this is our range in terms of X's. Let's try to make a dynamic text field to say that. So this is gonna be equal to, and we want this number. And then I'm gonna say X needs to be greater than that. So I'm gonna say this is gonna be a less, and then X, and then this, and then this number. So you can see X is greater than the bottom number because it's in the middle, and then it's X is less than this number. Now, if so if I say enter, it doesn't like that because I have to say, okay, it needs to be a text field. So I'm gonna put quotes around this because it sees that as a from as a text. And then to make it a text, I need to put an and to tie it together. So I have to put an and between the text field and the thing related to it. So put and between those two and then boom, great, that worked. But now like it's way too long because of the decimals. So I'm gonna go back in and round it. So I wanna round this. I'm gonna embed a round tab, go to the end of it before the and, and then comma, how many digits? Let's go two digits out. And then, actually I don't need, let's just go zero digits out. And then I'm gonna say, close that up and I need to round this one, round tab, and then just to the whole number. So comma, just zero and then enter and boom, dynamic header formula. Amazing, home tab, font group, making that black, white centered. Okay, so now let's do an if function to, to say when X is in between this these two numbers. All right, so I'm gonna say this is gonna be equals if tab I'm gonna have two functions, two conditions, therefore I'm gonna embed an and. The two conditions are that this number needs to be, let's say, greater, it needs, to, it need, this number needs to be, 
uh, needs to be greater than this number, comma, second condition, this number needs to be less than this number, close up the and, those are our two tests, comma, what do you want us to do if that's true, says Excel, we want you to then give me uh, the percent, if that's true, give me the percent. What do you want us to do if it's not true? We'll leave it blank. How do I tell Excel that? You put a quote, space, quote, leave it blank, put a blank space in there. All right, and then enter, nothing's there. I'm gonna percentify and add decimals, hoping that it's still correct, and then double click it down, and something happened, K Paso double clicking on it. I need to have absolute references here. Man, what are you doing? Anything that's over in HM, I need an absolute reference. So this HM, F4, absolute, HM, F4, absolute, everything else I need to move down. So enter, let's try it again, double click it down. All right, that looks mejor. Let's, yeah, okay, I think that's right. So now let's control shift down, blue, bordered. So now I can add that to my graph. So now we're gonna go chart design, data, add the data. This is the name of the data. I'm doing this fast because we're running long on time and we've done this before, but I just wanna practice it every time because these pictures are helpful. Control shift backspace, this button, this button, there it is, boom, boom. But I also wanna see the Z scores down here. So I'm gonna double click on this one. I want a secondary axis that I'm gonna add now. I'm gonna close it up. Then I'm gonna add my secondary axis by going here, second data, which I can now have a separate secondary axis to. So I'm gonna then add here and make this range the Z, control shift down, control backspace, and then select this because it's not showing up on the right. So I'm gonna select this until it shows up. There it is, okay. And then it still doesn't show up yet because I'm gonna close, I don't need this on this side. So I'm gonna get rid of that. And then I have to then say plus axis, show me the secondary axis. It's on the top though, I want it at the bottom. So I'm gonna say more, select the top bit and then say, where do you want it? I want it down below at the low end. And then it's now it's thinking because it's I have been doing too many things, Excel's. Okay, I just had to click around a bit and Excel fixed it. All right, so that's the idea. So we just, so we graphed it, so remember, so we took this data and we graphed it so that you can see it. And again, we're still using a normal distribution and kind of thinking about this basically as the range. And if I was to say, insert, give me my little cheater line here, right? Boop, boop. And then I can make that green. We have uh, the middle point we said was 829. So that should be, uh, now it keeps on changing, right? But it's still somewhere around here middle point 829 and then we have our range which was uh 806 it's currently 806 to 852 so 806 to 852 should be somewhere like here 806 852 about and then 95 percent is in the middle so you'd think that would be about two standard deviations right so something like two standard deviations on the high and the low because it's a bell curve now if we didn't know the the standard deviation of the population and if the population we had a smaller sample then we might not be able to use norm.dis for the bell curve but rather t distributions in which case you have fatter tails so it's not going to have that same two standard deviations to have 95 percent of the data so but we can still do a similar kind of calculation in that scenario if certain conditions are met and this general idea will be somewhat similar, which we will take a look at in future presentations.